بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد. A question on all of our lips is when is Laila al Qadr? However, Allah Azza wa Jalla does not ask this question in Surah al Qadr. Allah Azza wa Jalla does not say متى Laila al Qadr. Rather, Allah asks a different question. وما أدراك ما Laila al Qadr. What will make you know how great Laila al Qadr is? See, the interesting part about Laila al Qadr is that we don't know when it is. It's hidden. Why? Because it's extra special. Is it when something's really special, you conceal it. True. If a person has a million dollars, they keep it hidden in a vault, in a safe. Also, our women, they're so special, we cover them up, we conceal them. Jannah is so special, it's hidden. Allah Azza wa Jal, the most special, we can't see Him. And that's why when your kid asks you, and they might one day, Baba, what does Allah look like? A lot of parents will buckle at this question. Say it's a surprise. You know, like on Eid, you have a gift and you wrap it up, it's a surprise, yeah? So when something's really special, you keep it hidden. And of course, we will see Allah Azrael eventually. The point is, we don't know when Laylat al Qadr is, that's how special it is. And there's great wisdom in not knowing when. Why? So you strive in the last 10 nights, so you get Laylat al Qadr, the ajr for it, and you also get the reward for the other nights. Allahu Akbar. See how merciful Allah Azrael is. And what's also interesting is that we know when other acts of worship are. We know when the salawat are, yeah, the five daily prayers. We know when Ramadan is. We know when Hajj is. But we don't know when Laylat al Qadr is. That's ajib. That's ajib. As we said, among the many wisdoms, it's extra special. But Allah wants to give you the reward for Laylat al Qadr and, of course, the other nights as well. So Allah is saying, what will make you know how great this night is? Allah asked that question why? Because when you come to realize how great Laylat al Qadr is, you will strive to worship whether you know what night it is or not. Ibn al Qayyim rahimahullah said, لو كانت ليلة القدر ليلة واحدة لقمت السنة لقمت السنة حتى أدركها. He said, if ليلة القدر was on one night in the whole year, and I don't know when it is, which month it's in, he said, I would have stood in worship for one year straight just to get it. فما بالك بعشر ليال. He said, so what about just ten nights? And he's saying, I would have stood in worship for one year straight. Even if, if I didn't know when it was. Imagine just 10 nights. Allahu Akbar. And to further emphasize how great Laylat al-Qadr is, Allah said, Laylat al-Qadr, when you ask many Muslims, what is it equal to? Many Muslims will say, Laylat al-Qadr is equal to what? How many months? A thousand. I say no. It doesn't equal a thousand. Allah didn't say, Laylat al-Qadr is ka alfi shahr. True? He didn't say it's like. Allah said, khayr. It's better. Khayr min alfi shahr. It's better than a thousand. In other words, Allah could reward you if you catch Laylat al-Qadr in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Allah could reward you more than a thousand. Yes, because Allah said so. He said it's better than. He could reward you 2,000 months, 3,000 months, 4,000, maybe 10,000. One brother heard this. He goes, come on, Bizri, bro. Allah's going to give me 10,000? Yes. You know why? Because Allah is the giver here. How could you restrict something so great, which is the generosity and mercy of Allah? You know when someone is extremely wealthy here? Yeah? They'll give you more. Let's just say your son told you, Dad, I'm going to give you a lot. What is a lot to him? Yeah, what's a lot to him? A matchbox car? Yeah, maybe a shopkin? That's a lot to your kid. Your brother says to you, Akhi, I'm going to give you a lot. You might expect a phone. That's a lot. Your boss at work says, I'm going to give you a lot. You might expect a new company car. A king says, I'm going to give you a lot. You expect a mansion. See how it changes according to who is speaking? Hajmul kibar yukhadu bi hasab al qa'il. Depending on who's speaking, the magnitude changed. When Allah said, He's going to give you Allah, He's going to give you more than a thousand. Don't expect a thousand and one. Now, how can you get two, three, ten thousand months? It depends on your juhud, your striving, your acts of worship. A person who just does the bare minimum, he will get more than a thousand. Yeah? A person who does extra, yeah, he does tarawih, he does qiraat al Quran afterwards, and then he has tahajjud, might have to get ten or more. You see how it works according to your striving? Because the reward and ajru ala qadir al The reward is according to hardship. The more harder it is, the more you strive, of course, there's more ajr there. So the point is better than a thousand months. Now, what is a thousand months equal to? A thousand months equals to 83.4 years. What's the average life expectancy of a person in Sydney? Anyone know? It's around 81, 82. Check it on Google. 
You're living in Sydney, you're expected to live approximately 81, 82 years. Guess what? A thousand months of worship is more than that. It's 83 years plus. Allah is willing to give you and I more than our average life expectancy here in Sydney. And guess what? If you happen to be a Muslim living in Swaziland, which is in Africa, the average life expectancy there is 33. Allahu Akbar. Yani, if you are a Muslim living in Africa, Swaziland in particular, you'd be dying for Laylatul Qadr. That's more than double your average life expectancy. Khairun min alfi shahr. Allahu Akbar. So now you're thinking, okay, I want this reward. How do I get more than one night? One night? And that's why the ulama said, فَقَدْ خَسِرْ فَقَدْ خَسِرْ فَقَدْ خَسِرْ مَنْ لَا يَبِيعُ سَعَاتْ لِشَرَاءِ سَنَوَاتْ The one has lost. Wallahi, he has lost. Wallahi, he has lost. The one who doesn't sell a few hours in these last 10 nights to buy back years of worship. That person has lost. A person will be a fool not to want this reward. Honestly. So we'll end with how do we get the reward? Yeah? I want to catch Layat al Qadr. How do I catch it? How do I attain it? I'll mention three ways and we'll end there. The first way, and how are we going with time? Okay. The first way we can attain Layat al Qadr is i'tikaf. And I'm sure we all know this, where you seclude yourself for the last 10 nights in where? وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْبُيُوتِ فِي الْمَرَاكِزِ فِي الْحَدَائِقِ No, فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ I'tikaf can only be done in the masjid where you seclude yourself for the last 10 nights. You know, you can't set up a tent at home as some brothers have done. Right? They go to the park as well, they set up a tent, popcorn, you know, movies. No, that's not i'tikaf. I'tikaf is only in the masjid. Now, what's a masjid? A place that has a five daily prayers. Some of the ulama said, if it has Jum'ah as well. But, الأقل, at least five daily prayers. Even if you call it Musalla, even if you call it Markaz, it's got five daily prayers. Some of the ulama out of Jum'ah, it's considered a masjid. You perform i'tikaf there, guaranteed, 100%, you will get Laylatul Qadr. Now, what if you can't perform i'tikaf because of work, family, commitments, etc.? There's another way, Alhamdulillah. And that is via praying the Tarawih, which is what we're doing. Doing Qiyamul Layl in the evenings, because the Prophet وسلم, said so. Man qama Laylatul Qadr, yani yusalli. Whoever stands up in prayer in Laylatul Qadr, yeah, Allah Azzawajal, of course will give him the reward for attaining this night. And this is very important. You know, because not all of us can perform i'tikaf. So the ulama said, مَا لَيُدْرَ كُلُّهُ لَيُدْرَكْ جُلُّهُ You can't do it all, don't leave it all. So we can't do the ten nights, do at least the nights, part of it. Part of it. So the first way we said, i'tikaf. And by the way, the word i'tikaf comes from the word akafa in Arabic. And akafa means to dedicate, devote your time to something. A person could dedicate and devote time to work. A person can dedicate, devote time to study or family. Islamically, i'tikaf, to dedicate, devote time to ibadah. That's what it is. And i'tikaf is not as some places you find, you go there, they're hanging with the boys, drinking carrot juice and eating camel burgers or not. That's not i'tikaf. That's not the purpose. It's to attain Laylatul Qadr by worshipping Allah. You know why? Because when one loves another, what do they do? They want to spend time with them. True? You know, you love your wife, yeah? I'm sure you do. I hope you do. Please do. <laughs> you love your wife. You want to spend time with her. Maybe not now, but in the beginning, in the honeymoon, yeah? Every night, you know, you want to go on halal romantic dinner dates, yeah? And you're dropping all these lines on her. Oh, hello, we're getting to that, don't worry. <laughs> dropping all these lines, you know, because you're a smooth brother now, you just got married. She goes, Habibi, when's Eid? You go, every night is Eid. Why? Every night I'm with you is Eid. Ah, uh, that's a nice line. You can use that. It's halal, right? If she's your wife, right? The point is, when you love someone, you want to be with them. True? Especially in the early days, you know, all night on the phone. Habibi, ruhi, albi, hayati, right? You hang up first. No, you hang up first. No, you, right? And now, yalla bye. <laughs> now, we don't want to talk, yeah? You hang up, okay, bang. So, so the perp when you love someone, you want to spend time. If you love Allah, you want to spend time in ibadah. So, and the purpose, as our dear brother reminded us, is not to run away from the wife and kids. That's not the purpose of i'tikaf. Alhamdulillah, i'tikaf is here. Yalla, nahrab min al-mara. Nahrab min al-waj'a ras. No, no, that's not the purpose. Another brother once I saw, Wallah, the ajaib, you see. He set up office. Printer, you know, your fax machine, Wi-Fi, brothers. The purpose is not to pack or catch up on some work. I'm sleeping in the day because I'm fasting. Allah, I work at night. No. The purpose is to stay up in ibadah. So we said i'tikaf. Second way, we said you can get it if you can't do i'tikaf. Salah, yes? Which we're doing now, right? 
Third way, what if a person can't pray? Who can't pray? Give me an example of a person who can't pray. A sick person. Or a woman who has her cycle. She's menstruating. Can she get the reward? Sorry, she can't. Is that correct? No, she can. Alhamdulillah. A person who can't pray still can get the reward. Fire, staying up in ibadah in general. Acts of worship in general apart from prayer. Such as what? Reading? Quran or dua or dhikr. What's the proof? Hadith of Aisha. And we'll end here. Aisha radla anha said, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا دخل العشر شد مئزرة وأحيا ليلة وأيقظ أهلا Aisha says when the last ten nights would come the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would شد مئزرة he'll get serious يعني شمرة like you know roll up the sleeves you'll get serious you know when you're about to punch on with someone please don't tonight alright the point is when you're about to punch on you roll up the sleeves that شد مئزرة يعني he tied in the waist belt another meaning is he wouldn't have intimate relations with his Wives. But he got serious, that's the point. And he would bring the night to life. Meaning, he spent it in worship. As the ulama said, among them Ibn Kathir, bringing the night to life is not exclusive to prayer. It includes all acts of obedience and worship. This is how the ulama understood this hadith. والحافظ ابن حجر رحمه الله قال أحيا ليله أي سهره بالطاعة The Prophet brought the night to life meaning he spent it in طاعة in obedience So subhanAllah look at the mercy of Allah You can't pray at night Allah give you, gives you another way to attain Allah al-Qadr Dhikrullah, reading Quran Right? Just and and uh, of course dua etc So with that we conclude We ask Allah Azza wa Jal the Most High to make you and I among those who catch Laylat al-Qadr Amen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik nashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa natubu